My name is Gordon Bruin, and uh, welcome to uh, my website. I um, want to acknowledge my colleague, Tony Roten, who he's the guy behind putting all of it together. He's a master at doing that. I'm grateful for um, his efforts. I wanted to kind of, um, I've kind of been offline for, sheesh, I don't know, how many years has it been? Anyway, number of years. Used to have a online presence through Intergold Counseling as I ran a, a private practice for a number of years and then had some other business opportunities. And so um, that had to, to be shut down. And since I um, kind of retired from full-time work, and um, just felt a pressing need to try to give back and uh, create this website. And hopefully, uh, I mean, the desire behind it is to try to help in any way I can with uh, some of the mental health issues that we're dealing with in our society today. Um, from my perspective, uh, it seems like the greatest challenge we face right now is is a battle for what I call attention or resource allocation. Where are our resources being drawn to and allocated? And there are some very, very powerful forces in the world today that um, really can, that are meant to grab our attention and take us down roads that we may not particularly want to go down. And so the purpose of developing this website is to um, give you some insights, some of the things I've learned from the, from the past 30 plus years as being a licensed uh, clinical mental health counselor. Uh, I've literally spent thousands of hours with individuals in uh, dealing with anxiety, depression, addiction issues, trauma, recovery. Um, and anyway, just want to see if there's any way I can provide some resources to help people find some peace and direction in their life. One of the things that I've done throughout my life, I'm an avid reader. I mean, I try to be, try to constantly study, um, learn from other people. I love the Greek philosophers, Aristotle, Plato, Socrates, Epictetus. Um, I, I, I love reading their words that have come down um, through, through the years. And it seems like when someone comes across a thought that is extremely profound or powerful, it tends to last through the course of time. And one of the things I do, and I'm going to touch briefly on some books. These are, see, these are a, a few books that I want to talk about um, today in developing what I call um, a mindful warrior mindset. All of these books that I just, I, I read a lot of business books, read a lot of uh, military books, psychology books, since that's the field I'm in, but um, there seems to be a common thread for the mindset of those who are extremely ex successful in life that seem to be able to navigate through the challenges and storms that constantly face us all. Um, also, I don't know if I'll talk about it in this podcast, but Steve Jobs and Phil Knight, they have some profound, uh, there's some profound insights in their life and their stories that, that I think can impact us all and, and we can learn from them. But, um, so what is a mindful warrior mindset? As, if you look at all of these, all of these books, sorry, you know, I don't know if it's worthwhile to list them all. Unbreakable by Tom Shea. Chris Wallace wrote a book, Countdown Bin Laden, No Easy Day, Mark Owen, Dan Few, Rourke Denver, um, Call Sign Chaos, Jim Mattis, who is the Secretary of Defense and Total Focus by Brandon Webb. There's also a couple of online um, books that are, I mean, audio books through Audible. I read First Fast and Fearless um, by Brian Heiner. 
and Clayton Christensen, How You Measure Your Life, The Way of the Seal by Mark Devine, Unbeatable Mind, Mark Devine, Atomic Habits, um, David Goggins' book, Never Finished. Anyway, what is, what is the mindset of individuals that are extremely successful? It begins with this first thought that um, also another prolific author, Robert Greene, perhaps you've heard of him, 48 Laws of Power, and written, uh, uh, I think, four or five other books that are New York Times bestsellers. I was listening to a podcast um, by him one day, and I love it when he says that the one thing we have control of is our attitude. How we choose to look at something is in our power. If we can can be uh, awakened to that reality. goes back to something I believe William James once said. He says, my first belief is, I'm paraphrasing because I don't have the quote right before me. My first belief is to believe in choice, that I have the ability to choose for myself what I want to do with my thoughts. And that also reminds me of a statement by Viktor Frankl. He wrote the book, Man's Search for Meaning. And he, to me, is a very credible individual because he was a survivor of the German concentration camps. I, I can't imagine um, a more challenging situation that any individual could ever um, be, be going through. And I know there's some stuff going on in the world right now, in the war in Iraq, and, and around the world that is very similar to that. It's heart-wrenching. What do we do in situations like that? So listen to what Viktor Frankl said. He says, everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstance, to choose one's own way. Between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response, and in our response lies our growth and our freedom. So what he was saying, notwithstanding he was living in the most horrific conditions imaginable for a human being, he says, no matter what is happening in the external world, when it happens, there's a little space where we get to choose how we are going to respond to that. That's completely 100% in our control. And um, the mindset of that... You know, all of these guys, every book that I'm that I'm referring to today, they're, they're all in a roundabout way, they say the same thing. And that's one of one of the, the things that I've tried to do through the years. Like when I when I read a book, for example, I just uh, I like have a dialogue with it in that um, you know, I, I like mark it up. I, I have a pen, it's like I'm I'm trying to have a dialogue in my mind with the author of this book. That's the power of reading. And, um, and I agree, I don't agree, and so forth. And I love something that Jim Mattis said, Secretary of Defense, who was a leader of the military over in the Middle East for a period of time. Listen to what he said about reading. If you haven't read hundreds of books, you are functionally illiterate and you will be incompetent because your personal experiences alone aren't broad enough to sustain you. A commander who claims he is too busy to read is going to fill body bags with troops as he learns the hard way. So all of these guys um, talk about reading, about learning. The Greek philosophers talk about the same thing, that you should study other men's writings and learn what they have learned through years of experience and hard knocks rather than having to go through it yourself. But the mindset of these guys, to be a mindful warrior mindset, in, comes down to these principles. They have what's what they call a can-do attitude. I can do it. Whatever is confronting me, I will find a way to be able to do it. They, they have courage inside themselves, bravery, confidence. They, they just have that mindset that they can do it. Second thing 
is that they have a, they've developed a healthy sense of humor in that they, they know that things go south, that things go wrong, that no plan, one of, one of the things that's very common in these books, especially in the military, they will say no plan survives contact with the enemy, meaning no, no matter what they plan to do, when they actually go out there and do it, something goes south a little bit. But they have to plan so that they're prepared, and then they adapt, improvise, and then have the mindset of overcoming. So they have a can-do attitude, then they develop a healthy sense of humor, meaning that when things go bad, they don't completely fall apart. They roll with it. They are in some of the most difficult situations in the world, and that's when they use a sense of humor to try to get themselves to lighten up to be able to navigate um, through it. So it's something we can all learn. When things aren't going so well, sometimes it's just the only option is just to cut up a little bit and laugh and, and, and as you're trying to navigate through it. Third component of, a, of what I call a mindful warrior mindset as we are striving to take back our attention and, what, and choose what we focus on and how we deal with things that happen to us is Zero victim mentality. No matter what happens when things go bad, these guys and women, they refuse to be a victim. They don't believe the world owes them a living, and they believe that they have to earn every single thing that, um, that, they, that they get. They don't like handouts in any way, shape, or form. That's what like makes the kind of the special forces so... Um, intriguing to me is they train and train and train. They train to failure in that they know know themselves. They know what they can do. And so there is a confidence inside themselves. So it really does matter. It does matter if you're taking care of your body. Your body is your life. Your health is your life. It matters if you exercise on a continual basis. It does matter what you eat, how much you eat. It matters how you look, how you present yourself. That's one of the things I was listening to this story in First Fast and Furious this morning about when, when Navy SEAL leaders are brought to um, or given the opportunity to be a commander, they're all put through the same routine. One thing that, and the, and the story that, that Ed Heiner told this morning was that there was, there was one who was chosen to be a leader um, and he didn't mean to minimize that, he, that he, he didn't have the skills. He had the skills, but he was pretty much, nothing really set him apart from the others except his physical stature. He was rock solid in his physical health. I mean, he, he pushed things, he looked good, he looked like a leader. And when everything, and, he, and from his perspective at Heiner, he says, it really does matter. Whether we want to believe it or not, it really does matter how we present ourselves, how we speak to other people. Do you have, and he talks about being able to public speak, and we know that's, that's a great fear for so many people, getting up and being, a, being able to express your thoughts. But you just got to be willing to do it. And the only way to do it is do it. And, and not every time is great, so you just get up and you just keep rolling on. Anyway, so... Um, can-do attitude, sense of humor, zero victim mentality, and then they just don't focus on the negative things that happen to them. They believe, they choose to believe, that obstacles are simply opportunities to grow. They look at opposition as a natural form of life. It will never stop. There's always going to be problems. Also, you know, just a book popped into my mind, The Road Less Traveled. Years ago, M. Scott Peck, MD, wrote a book called The Road Less, Less Traveled. It was a New York Times bestseller for a number of years. This is way back in 1970, the late 1970s. And he says one of the things that he noticed even back, back then is that somehow people tend to get the misperception that life should be easy. The very first line of the book is, life is difficult. This truth, this great truth, when we embrace it, seems then to supersede the issue. It means like, oh, okay, why am I expecting that things shouldn't be difficult? We should expect 
obstacles to hit us. Not with a negative mindset, but with it, it's going to happen. But I have a can-do attitude, first strike mentality. The military leaders call this the speed of war, meaning things are going to be happening on a continual basis. Just look at your life. Look at what you planned during the day, look yesterday, and how things went south. The only thing that we can do is have that positive mindset, first strike mentality, meaning I will be proactive and set my life. I'm not going to not gonna be just playing defense all life. It's, it's more all, all of my life. It's more offense. What are you doing proactively with your life as you're trying to find your, your mission, your purpose? And there's a process in doing that. But um, it's a very meaningful and important process to try to find what it is you are here to do. And what is your purpose? We all have a, a, a different purpose. And uh, anyway, another great book uh, by Clayton Christensen, a Harvard professor. Um, and he, I think the title of it is that How Will Your Life Be Measured? And he talks about our, our purpose in life as we're going through it sometimes emerges and we have to be open to emergent things that happen as we're fixed up. We want to do this and we keep striving and striving and striving, but it just doesn't work out. There are times when we need to pivot and move in another direction. Like for example, he tells that his dream, his ultimate dream was to be the editor of the Wall Street Journal. It never happened. But it led him into being a teacher, a professor at Harvard University, where and, and a great business innovator. Um, but he said, he, I, "You have to pivot once in a while." So this idea, this mindset, uh, so it, it, there's just like there's a never give up, never surrender. But it's like mm, sometimes you just have to do that if things aren't working. It's crazy to continue to go on something that after enough experience, you're able to go, you know what? I need to take what, where I'm going and pivot a little bit and move in this direction. That's what I've experienced in my life as my purpose as ha is unfolding before me. And it continues to happen. I'm 64 years old and I really believe, and I think this is also a, a positive mindset warrior mindful warrior mindset, the best is yet to come. Meaning the future is bright. We, we are, we learn from all, I love aging. I love it. I, I, I love the, the time that I have right now. I love the focus. I do a lot of focus on reading, studying, working with clients and physical health. Get up early every morning and uh, non-negotiable in my life is physical exercise. I get up and work out, listen to music, listen to books on tape. Um, it's, it's the best part of the day for me. Sit in the sauna, sit in the spa, ride a bike, swim, push-ups, weights. I love weight training. It's, it helps us to stay as young as we possibly can because we can't stop the fact that we're all aging. Can't stop it. And so we might as well embrace that reality and make the very best of every day that we can. I love the poem by, uh, who is it, Robert Herrick, who says, Gather ye rosebuds while ye may, while time is still a-flying, for this same flower that blooms today, tomorrow will be a-dying. It's kind of like the Latin term for that is carpe diem, meaning seize the day. We're all just travelers here in mortality. There's nothing that can change that fact. So we might as well strive to stay healthy and young as long as we possibly can to make the most impact uh, while, and figure out why we are here to make our life worthwhile. There seems to be this drive, innate drive within us as human beings to make our life worthwhile, to do something meaningful. And, and yeah, we can learn from other people, but, um, and set, you know, and have some models and examples to draw on, but each of us individually, the quest is to, for us to become the best we can be and not be so worried about comparing ourselves with other people. You're always going to find someone smarter, faster, stronger, always. 
It's not the issue, but there's no one just like you. And, and um, with this mindset and this working on mindfulness and having a, what I call a future vision statement that um, in this website and some of the videos that are on here can talk more, we'll talk more about that, the treatment manual that's, that's offered. There's a whole section on creating a, a future vision statement model for yourself that, that, we're, that we're striving for a place for your mind to go. I have seen so many things in my 30 plus years as a mental health therapist with anxiety, addiction, depression, trauma recovery. I know that no matter where an individual's been, what they've been through, they can get better. They can make progress. They can find meaning and purpose in their life. Another one of one of my favorite books is it has to do with trauma recovery is The Body Keeps the Score by Dr. Bessel van der Kolk. I love it in his work. And the last half of his book talks about treatment modalities that, that can help people change. And I love the part of getting engaged in your body. A lot of trauma survivors, for example, dissociate. They don't feel comfortable inside their bodies. And it's for obvious reasons, because it's not safe. But awakening and, one of, and finding strength and power in your body, I love something he says. He says, imprints of the past can be transformed by having physical experiences that directly contradict the helplessness, rage, and collapse that are a part of trauma, thereby regaining self-mastery. So, Again, the purpose of this website is to introduce you to a concept that I call the mindful warrior mindset. We really are at war in our minds for what, what the battle is, is for our attention. That's it. Those who are extremely successful in life, and maybe in another podcast I'll talk more in depth about these two guys. If you, if you look at Steve Jobs and Phil Knight, two of the most impactful companies that have ever been created, Nike, Shoe Dog, that's his story, and then Walter I Isaacson wrote an autobiography by, uh, for, for Steve Jobs. These guys, they were so impactful because they were completely and totally obsessed and focused with their idea and their dream. And there was something surrounding them called, people around them called it reality distortion field, meaning they could bend reality because their passion, their focus, their intensity was on the task at hand and they didn't get distracted in a million different directions because they had the fortitude in their mind and the capacity. And, that, and that's what we're trying to, to figure out. How do we do that? How do we grab that mindset to find what we are to do in life and be that focused? Anyway, I just um, wrapping up this little segment, wherever you are, no matter where you've been, what you're struggling with, if you haven't lived today yet, today's a new day. Okay? Even though you may have tried a thousand times to deal with an issue in the past and, and you haven't quite gotten there, today's a new day. How do you know today you're not going to do it? How do you know today something's not going to transpire where all of a sudden it shifts and your life pivots? Like Marcus Aurelius says, whole life can pivot on a single day. Maybe it's just a shift of the mindset going, you know what? I'm, I'm going to take this mindset and, and ground it inside of my heart can do attitude healthy sense of humor i'm not going to take everything so dang seriously that i just can't even function in life you know zero victim mentality no one's coming to save me i've got to take care of myself i've got to i've got to you know i'm, I'm i don't mean to say that through through the christian point of view yes jesus saves people i'm just saying but it's according to your faith that you have to access that and it, it's us, what we choose to do inside of, of our minds and our attitudes. And then do not focus on the negative things that happen. 
obstacles are simply opportunities to grow and you're stronger than you think you are. One of the things that I love about weight training and constantly working out, I just, you can do things that you never thought possible before if you just get engaged in the process. And another thing that I have found that the answers and the direction that um, will come into your life is more likely to be found when you are fully engaged in doing something. If you're not sure what to do, do something. As long as, as long as it's an honorable thing to do when you're trying, and if you're engaged in that, then other things open up to you. You'll have thoughts and impressions come to your mind and directions on what you need to do in order to move forward in life. 